Okay guys, so I know that Girl Meets World season 2 is almost over, but damn did that feel like some sort of like a mid-season finale or something, because damn that was huge. Hey guys, Kevin again, my for Girl Meets World season 2, episode 25, Girl Meets New Year, and I could not wait for this episode, mainly because I knew it was going to continue the storyline from Girl Meets Texas. Now, essentially this was Girl Meets Texas part 4, but you knew they had to continue the storyline because nothing was resolved in part 3, which is one of the reasons I love part 3 as much as I did, because nothing was resolved, and I didn't want them to resolve it, and really show that things aren't easily solved in 23 minutes. You just can't solve everything um, as easily as you think you can. I think they really showed that well. And not only that episode, but this episode showed it even better. I mean, things proved to be a lot more complicated than they were. And overall, guys, by far, I think... Maybe not the maybe not as good as part three, but definitely I actually like think of this as the second part of part three. Like if part three was a one hour episode, this would have been the actual ending. And damn, we're gonna get to that amazing ending because endings like tonight's episode's ending really shows why I love this show as much as I do. But let's get into this episode. One of the things I love the most about this episode is that it didn't focus on the will they won't they of uh Maya, Maya Lucas and uh, Riley. It didn't focus on that. It's not about our Maya and Lucas going to get together, our Riley and Lucas can get together. It's about this secret that now that we know that Riley has, what is she going to do with it? Is she going to tell Maya and Lucas, or is she going to keep it inside of her? That's the big question here, and I thought they really handled that very well, and how this is going to affect them, because, yeah, a lot of things are going to change. And the first scene of this episode perfectly, I think, um, you know, goes with the basic idea of this episode. I mean, Maya and uh, Riley, they're just eating mac and cheese, and they're not talking at all. They're not talking, and uh, it's very awkward, and you can imagine why. I mean, obviously, things are very different between them. They've never really had to deal with this before. You know, before it's been, Riley's like Lucas, and Maya's made fun of him. That's how it's been. Now, after all that's happened, they're very confused. You know, they really haven't experienced this, and it's very new to them, and you really see that here. And I love how uh, Riley just didn't want to talk. You know, she just went on putting ketchup on her mac and cheese. And I like that Maya did tell Riley in the moment that her and Lucas did not kiss. I like that she told her that because, you know, Riley was under the impression that they did kiss. And Maya told her that they didn't. And it, he just put his face near hers. And I think it's showing that Lucas is just as confused as Riley and Maya. And I don't think I've brought this up yet, but honestly... I think this episode shows that he's just as confused. You know, he doesn't know if he loves Riley. He doesn't know if he likes Maya. He just knows that suddenly, you know, so Riley liked him and suddenly she just sees them as brother and sister. And Maya liked, and now Maya likes him and things are very weird between them. So he really doesn't know what's going on either. And I think they really showed that very well too. I mean, that scene in part two, I think really summed it up. You know, he really doesn't understand his feelings and I like seeing that so they really don't know how to deal with this and how they're going to move on and things like that it's just it's a very interesting scene and i really like the way that was done um so then they're in harper's class and yes harper was back in this episode which it was cool to see her again i really do like her character mainly because the insight that she provides. I mean, I like that she was actually having him read an actual text rather than a comic book, because, you know, before we saw her teach some comic books, but now she's actually having them read a legit book because she is an English teacher and she's going to go with the curriculum. They're reading Sense and Sensibility, which is basically the situation that uh, Maya and Riley are in. And the second that Maya hears about it, she doesn't want to talk about it. She doesn't want anything to do with love. And Maya told Riley before, I'm not going to think about this. I'm not going to, you know, it's not going to change anything. But she clearly does not want to think about love because it's the last thing that is on Maya's mind. It's the one thing that is on her mind that she just doesn't want to talk about because she doesn't want to deal with change. It's that simple, you know. She's so used to the way things are that she doesn't want to change. That's really what I think it is to Maya, that she is in this just, you know, routine, and we as humans, when we're in routines, we don't want to break them. It's very hard to get out of them, and Maya is a great example of that. She doesn't really know what to do, and you really do see that throughout this whole episode. But basically, Harper's telling about the story Sense and Sensibility, which is essentially what they're going through. You know, there are two girls, they both like a guy, and uh, it affects them. They are thinking with their head, and it's, it's a very interesting scene. And what Harper talks about, I definitely like seeing that it tears this, you know, their friendships apart, and... It's just, it's all the stuff that they don't want to hear. They don't want to talk about it, and uh, 
Charlie is back in this episode. Yay, Charlie. I don't like this character. I have to say, I don't like this character. He does represent, though, the exact kind of guy that Riley doesn't need. And I thought it was really great to see his character to just show how different he is from Lucas. This is the kind of guy that, you know, will just... He thinks he likes, I think he thinks he likes Riley, and he clearly wants to do anything to be with her, and he's honestly coming off as kind of a creep, I have to say. This entire episode, am I the only one that thought Charlie was actually kind of creepy here? I really thought he was being creepy this entire episode. I mean, the way that he was just ganging up on Riley every time he met up with her was very strange, and I definitely thought that was just really weird overall. So, that to me was a very strange scene, um... But basically, they're in class, and uh, they start bringing sense and sensibility. Now, Maya doesn't get very far with it, again, because she doesn't want to face those fears. That's kind of how I, what I saw it as. Riley, however, makes it all the way to, like, page 116, and uh, it was very interesting to see that. And I did find interesting that Riley made all the way there, because to her, she wants to come have the illusion that she's okay, that there's nothing wrong with her, that there's nothing she's hiding, and that she's completely okay with Maya and Lucas being together, and she really isn't holding anything back. Um, which Maya can clearly tell there's more to the story. I mean, you can definitely tell um, that there is more, but Riley doesn't want it to seem that way. That's kind of how I saw it, at least. That Riley kind of does want to face this, while Maya really doesn't. And she doesn't even want to really talk about it or really, you know, seem that interested in it. So Riley sees, though, that um, the way that the girls in the book, you know, come up with their solution is to throw a ball. And Riley feels that they should do just that. They should throw a ball on New Year's, of course. Because what happens on New Year's, when the ball drops, somebody kisses and... That's what they plan on doing. They want to solve their feelings out through a New Year's party. For whatever reason, Charlie sees this immediately and immediately to go tells Lucas about it. And again, I really thought he was being honestly kind of a dick when it came to Lucas. I mean, just the way that he was in Lucas's face, um, bowing down to him. I mean, I don't know what Charlie was trying to say, but... It's not, I don't hate this character, I just, I don't really like him, I honestly don't. I mean, he's not ruining the show because he's not a main character, and I feel like we're not supposed to like him, but his character, I just, I don't understand what the point of his character, I don't understand uh, his character, you know, he really, it seemed like at first he was a good choice for Riley, but now it seems like he's the complete opposite of what Riley needs, and I like the way we're seeing that, you know, he's very obsessive, he's very compulsive, and he's very direct with what he wants, and Lucas really isn't like that at all. Lucas never really says exactly how he feels. And again, I really think that shows just how confused he really is. So when Farkle hears about this, immediately he pulls Riley aside. And I love this uh, confrontation between Farkle and Riley. It's the perfect example. And again, this is a Disney Channel show. And I, I can't, I say that every episode mainly because of scenes like this. I mean, this is not something you get in a Disney Channel show. It really shows how just one simple confrontation can change everything. And this scene really shows that, you know, Farkle tells Riley, look, I understand that you have feelings for Lucas and you don't want to admit it, but you need to let those feelings out. You can't keep them inside of you or else it's going to get worse. And I do agree with that. I mean, when you have a secret and you don't tell someone, you're just dying to tell them. It's going to get worse unless you tell them. And basically, Farkle tells her that if he that if she does not tell Lucas by midnight, uh, all hell's going to break loose and it's going to end up very badly for her. Um, and, you know, I like how he was trying to be a friend here and he's trying to just give her some friendly advice. But again, it really seems like this is not really something that Riley wants to talk about. She doesn't want to talk about her and Lucas. And she's also saying how she doesn't want to bring it up because she wants Maya to be happy with Lucas. You know, Maya step back. And I do agree with Riley saying. I understand her point here. You know, Maya step back for her when she was with Lucas. I understand that. Um, so she wants to step, you know, when she liked Lucas. So she wants to step back for Maya. Um and be with Lucas, you know, that's what I, that's what she wants to do for her, because she wants Maya to be with Lucas, and she wants her to be happy, and I understand she wants to be a supportive friend, but she has these feelings, and she needs to make note of them, or else it's really going to be very bad for her if she doesn't understand what's going on, and it's like Topanga said in, in part three, it is the scariest ride anyone can go through, and you definitely really do see that here, and I thought they handled that very well. So, Farkle says he's going to go with Smackle. We'll get into Farkle and Smackle in a minute because they, by far, had some of the best scenes in this episode. Um, 
and basically they make the events and basically then we see we are in Corey's class now and I really like this scene with Corey what he talks about he talks about three things specifically he talks about friendships um then he talks about uh you know maturity and then he talks about feelings uh, the first thing he talks about, of course, is friendships, how we just consciously, unconsciously, you know, make friends and things like that, that we just know we like, you know, we like friends and things like that. And then, of course, we just realize that we're growing. Um, we don't realize we're growing. We just notice a change in ourselves. And honestly, I see it every day. I would completely agree with that. I see myself growing more and more every day, and I think they did that very, very well here. Um, but what I also like about this scene is that, one, we're not going to get Girl Meets World, um, you know, till January. So this was a good way way to kind of be like this is what their lives are going to be like for the rest of the season and probably for the rest of the show um they're gonna have to deal with these feelings unless they do something about it and it's just it's very interesting to see how much that dynamic these dynamics have changed it's it's really great stuff i definitely really like seeing that here notice that riley and maya don't have a lot of scenes to they do have scenes together but they're not the way they usually are i mean yeah they're playing off of each other and of course they have the great chemistry that they do have but it's a bit broken it really is because they're both very confused and they don't understand what's going on they don't understand their feelings they don't understand how to feel about it they don't understand what to tell each other there are a million things they're dealing with they don't know what to do about it and I definitely like seeing that here so then Corey tells them the biggest thing is feelings you know we don't want to admit our feelings it's something that we don't understand it's a deeper feeling that we really can't process but we just have them and I definitely do agree with that the feelings is the hardest of those three by far it's very hard to acknowledge your feelings for someone it's hard to tell but you have to do it eventually because if you don't it's going to drive you crazy it's that simple it's going to drive you crazy and it could end up really badly for you if you don't tell someone about it or you don't do something about it you know you like someone now i'm not saying that the second you like a girl you should just go up and be like yo do you want to go out that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying just go up to a girl and be like do you want to go out that's not what i'm saying you know especially if you and the girl are not as close which has happened to me many times most of the girls I like I'm not nearly as close with as I want to be um I will definitely admit that but in this case this you know Riley Maya Lucas and Farkle are all best friends and by the way where the fuck was Zay in this episode Zay was nowhere to be found it did feel a bit strange that he wasn't there since he was a part of this and maybe Zay just hasn't been with them because he doesn't want to be involved maybe that's why but uh it was interesting because Zay was kind of like the watcher in part three and now he's not even there um interesting I, I don't know it just it feels like Zay's become a much more essential part of this group that it felt weird not seeing him it shows how much I like his character but he didn't need to be here but it just felt weird that he wasn't there i'd much rather see him over charlie any day i'd see him I'd, I'd like to see him over charlie definitely um but basically harper then they're back in harper's class and she talks to them about the most important part of sense and sensibility and i like what farkle says because that really is the point of this episode that it's all about thinking with your mind and having emotions and that's something that's the thing I like about this scene the most is you get to Maya and she's saying how she always does things with feelings and she acts, you know, you know, talks about her feelings, things like that, and just acts with emotions while Riley really thinks with her head and she's very, you know, she thinks very clearly about things and thinks what is the best thing about all this, but you have to find a way to have a balance. That really is what sense and sensibility is all about and that very much is what this episode was about and I definitely really like seeing that because that's clearly something that Riley doesn't have. She doesn't know how to, you know, get both. She doesn't know how to, you know, think very well and, you know, think things out, but also have emotions and do it, do things with, with your feelings. You know, she doesn't really know do that yet and I think it definitely is very interesting the way we're seeing that the growth of her character they're handling very well here and that's something they're doing well they're, it's this is not just some random ass love triangle this is a lot more of seeing these three characters develop and they're doing it very very well here so they all get ready for the party that's finally time for the party and uh Farkle arrives with Smackle these two are adorable I love Farkle and Smackle the way that they talk was just so great it reminded me of like the Big Bang Theory honestly you know Amy and Sheldon yes I know they're broken up now well actually I think they got back together I don't know I don't watch the Big Bang Theory I just know the last time I saw it they weren't together but you know Amy and Sheldon these two remind me of them they remind me of a young Amy and Sheldon and I think that's really great I think they bounce off each other really well they're very funny I like their scientific way of speaking 
thing. It's just, it's great. And I love how assertive Smackle is. She, Smackle definitely wears the pants in that relationship. Definitely, you can tell she does. And it's great to see that Farkle actually got a girlfriend. I think it's really great to see Farkle and Smackle. They're really great here. And every time, some of the funniest scenes, any time that she tried to make it seem like Lucas was flirting with her when he wasn't, I thought was just great. And I love the way that she always thinks Lucas is making a pass at her when he's not. And it's just, it's so funny. I love it. And if we get more of that, that'd be great. Because every time she does that, I laugh. It's just, she has such great comedic timing, and I love it. Smackle is by far one of the best things about this episode. Now, the whole time, Farkle is driving Riley insane with this clock. You know, he keeps going tick-tock, tick-tock, because he keeps telling her um, that, you know, he told her about this Greek god that this Greek guy, you know, if you, again, if you don't do this on midnight, it's going to end up really bad for you. And he keeps doing this, you know, just trying to say to her, you need to do this, you need to do this. And it's really annoying Riley. Again, she's trying to not bring it up. And there are many scenes where this is going on here. You know, you see Charlie arrive, and he's with Riley, and he's asking her if they're going to do something, um, which I understand Charlie here. You know, he just wants to get some answers. I understand that. But Lucas, I think, handled it a lot better. Better. You know, Lucas just sitting next to Maya and not really knowing what to do. And then Riley sits right back down next to him. And then Charlie's magically there. I don't know why, but he's magically there. Um, the fact that Charlie actually thinks him and Riley have a chance, I think, is really stupid. I mean, can you not tell that Riley just doesn't really want to face her feelings right now? Like, she really doesn't want to. And I don't understand how he didn't want to see that. I mean... Just the fact that he got that couples game. I mean, what the fuck did you think was going to happen? It was going to be awkward. It was going to be weird. And I understand he wanted answers. I understand that he wanted to see if him and Riley knew each other. But you're not a couple. It's that simple. You're not a couple. You haven't gone out. You never went out. And uh, you were supposed to go to that movie. I don't... You didn't go to the movies. Um, actually, I think... Did they go to the movies? I'm not sure if they did. But uh, I think they did go to the movies. Um, but it didn't really work out well. So... So you're not a couple. It's that simple. You're not a couple. And again, I don't hate Charlie. I just, he needs to get a brain. He really does because I don't understand how he doesn't see how him and Riley are not together. It's that simple. I mean, it's not rocket science here. You're not together. She doesn't like you. It's that simple. And I can tell that Riley does not like him. I love, by the way, I loved that scene between Corey and Topanga, the juice box scene, where they talk about how no matter what happens, they will have each other every year. It just, it's so great. It felt so much like a Boy Meets World scene, because again, we have to remember that this is a Boy Meets World sequel, and it very much felt like a continuation of their great relationship that we always see, and we don't get to see it enough, and I really like that we've been seeing more and more of it. They've really been, um, you know, doing, you know, showing it very, very well, and this is probably one of the cutest scenes they've had on the show. I mean, their juice box scene, I, I just, I thought that was great. It was really great stuff. Also, I loved Augie just trying to stay up as long as he could. I mean, every little kid wants to do that. When you're a little, you know, when you're young, you staying up at 12 o'clock seems so, like, risky and exciting. And then when you do it, you, it, you know, when you're, like, my age, it's like, it doesn't really matter, you know? It's, stay up at midnight, yay. You stay up at midnight, okay, cool. Unless you have, like, a girlfriend, you kissed her, then it really, or unless you have someone you're with and you kiss them then it really doesn't matter if you stay up till midnight it really doesn't it's nothing that big but it just made me remember when I was a little when I was a ki little kid and I wanted to well not really a little kid but like I'd say even when I was like 11 12 I mean I still was like that I always thought staying at midnight was like the greatest thing ever but it's it's fun. It definitely is fun to watch the ball drop, but it's not the greatest thing ever. I think it just shows how much you mature as you get older. I think it's a great example of that, but I love seeing Augie like that. That was definitely very funny. And then the couples game happens, and uh, there are questions that they just don't want to answer. And again, this very much went with the idea of them to not want to talk about the situation. Because the biggest question they come up with, I love the t I love seeing Lucas and Maya um, swallow the questions. Kind of like they're just swallowing uh, their feelings. Like, they don't want to admit their feelings. They're, they're kind of just swallowing their feelings, putting them inside their mouth, so that way they don't have to admit them, and uh, keeping it inside their brain. That's what they want. You know, they're, they're keeping it inside their brain, um, where no Nobody can see it, just like they digested the paper where nobody could see it. That, that definitely is what that was like. And I, I know I'm kind of looking at it as a very symbolic way, but I really feel like this episode had a lot of deeper meanings to it, and I really love when Girl Meets World does that. I think they did that very well here. Um, so this questions game happens. There are a lot of questions that they just don't want to answer. And then the big scene happens where Farkle takes Riley outside, and uh, he finally tells her that she needs to tell Lucas the truth, and... 
Midnight's about to hit. You don't know what's going to happen. Everyone's gone outside at this point except for Maya. And Maya hasn't gone out because she's just very confused. She doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know if she should stay if she should stick with Riley because, you know, that could end up really badly. Um if she should talk to Lucas, she doesn't really know what to do. And I like what she tells Corey and Tanya. This is going to be a hard year. Yeah, it is going to be a hard year. I mean, we know what season 3 is going to be. We know they're going to be in high school by the way. I'm I'm very happy the show was renewed for season 3. Awesome that it was. Um, but we know that they're going to be leaving middle school and going to high school. This is a big transition for them, and a lot's going to change. And this is a great example of that, and I definitely like seeing how Maya's just realizing, holy shit, next, the, the, you know, this year is going to be a lot different, and we're really maturing. Definitely, you can definitely see that here. Um, you know, we're no longer young kids. We're definitely turning into very mature young adults, and Maya's really realizing that, and I think it's really well done the way they handled that scene here. I definitely really like that. But what I liked even more was, of course, the ending of this episode, which, holy shit, let's just get to it, because damn, was it a huge ending. There's a lot to talk about in this ending, because there's a lot that happened, of course. So at first, we see Riley and Charlie, and I thought Riley was just going to tell Charlie, I don't like you, but what she tells him is more interesting. She tells him, you deserve better. And uh, I think what she's saying is you deserve someone that's more committed. You deserve someone that's actually going to listen to you. I'm not. I'm not going to listen to you. I don't like you. I like that she politely told him this, and I hope he backs off. I really hope he does because she basically just told him, look, I don't like you. It's that simple. Just go away. You deserve better. And, uh, you know, she doesn't want to handle feelings. And Charlie still doesn't seem to understand. It's really stupid. He doesn't understand it. I do like that he went with Augie. I like that scene with Augie where he told Charlie that how great it is to stay up. Like I said, I thought that was really great. But then, of course, we get the scene where it strikes midnight and Riley doesn't say anything. So Farkle abruptly just randomly tells everyone Riley still likes Lucas and everything is just silent. Everything. Um, everyone that was in the party, they leave, which I probably, I would have stayed, honestly. I would have wanted to see the juice. I would have wanted to see how that went down. Um, but basically, they all leave. That's what happens there. And then, of course, there's the big ending, which this really was big. I mean, at the end, they really did a great job of making this feel like something big and something um, that mattered. And I really thought they handled this very well. Of course, the ending... Um, Riley goes to, you know, Riley just sits down next to Maya and Lucas. They say nothing. They don't know what to do. And that's how the episode ends. And it really shows, again, this conflict is not solved. Riley now has this secret out. You know, Lucas now knows that she still likes him. Maya knows that she's been lying. Lucas knows that she's been lying. And how they're going to deal with this, we don't know. And I like that we don't know because we're as lost as they are right now. How are they going to deal with these feelings is beyond us. What it's going to do them, it is definitely going to change. I mean, Riley and Maya's relationship is going to be totally different now. They have a lot to deal with and they really, it could honestly really hurt their friendship. And that's the one thing that they don't want to do. The biggest, you know, thing to them that matters the most is their friendship. It is the most sacred thing to them. It is honestly their religion. It really is. I mean, you guys saw a girl means belief. You basically saw that they're kind of in this together. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens there. Uh, the way that Riley's whole friendship changed with Farkle, I kind of feel like she's not going to be as trusting of Farkle. And I like that Farkle said, look, I hope you forgive me. I just, I had to do this. I had to say what need to be said, and I understand what Farkle's saying, that this did need to be said, um, and of course, Lucas, how is he gonna react to this? I mean, Lucas has to be the most confused individual ever right now. I mean, if I was Lucas, I would be like, what the hell is going on? I mean, you got this girl after you, got this girl after you, how do they feel? They don't know what to do. It's gonna be very interesting to see what happens there, but overall, guys, what an amazing episode. Once again, we gotta wait till January 8th, January 8th, and then I believe we have, like, four or five episodes left, which is going to be great. I can't wait for the end of this season. Damn, what an amazing episode this was. I mean, I truly felt like that cliffhanger was something big. It's the biggest cliffhanger we've ever had on this show, and they really handled it very, very well here because they really did the whole theme of things are changing, and this is a very good example of that. But let me know what you guys thought of this episode. I absolutely loved every minute of this episode. This episode was absolutely amazing. I thought it was just fantastic. Probably best episode of the season. Honestly, I thought this was definitely best episode of the season. And I will see you guys in my next video, which, now let me know what you guys saw this episode. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Um, out of the four parts, definitely the best of the four Girl, Girl Meets Texas parts because it was the best in transitioning. And really, the theme of all this was transitioning. That's what the theme of this entire arc was. It was never about just these three being, you know, um, 
in this love triangle, it was never that. Yes, there's a love triangle, but it's a lot more than that. It's all about transitioning and dealing with feelings that they don't want to deal with, and I think that really is what this is all about, and definitely made things a lot more interesting. I don't know what you guys saw this episode. I absolutely loved it. Uh, minus Charlie, I thought it was still a really great episode. I will see you guys next year, which will be for the Vampire Diaries and for the originals. I watched both of them, and I will see you guys for my reviews of that. Okay, bye.